In Maya 2013, we added the new node editor, which combines functionality of the hypershade and the hypergraph. And in Maya 2014, we've extended that functionality by improving the visual feedback as well as improving the general workflow for editing and managing nodes. So we'll start here by looking at this gun. And what you see here is I've got a rig set up so that I have a, a curve controller driving uh, multiple objects at the same time. So I'm just going to graph those into my node editor. And as I do, you'll see that I basically have a pretty complex graph with a bunch of kind of uh, uh, overloaded visual information. So we can, of course, um, similar to the hypergraph, take this uh, one of these nodes and then just simply refine the view by increasing or decreasing the number of input and output connections. To further simplify the view, we also have now a hotkey that would allow me to simply turn off the uh, visual uh, text information associated with the node so that I can just see the graph itself. Now, if I hit the 5 key again, I get the name of the object. So here you can see I have, for instance, uh, trigger handle engage. And then if I hit 5 key again, then I get information about the node type. So here you can see I have an animation curve feeding into the transform. So this is just a quick way of changing the visual feedback that you're seeing while you're editing node networks. So let's pull back and we'll work on some uh, shading networks. So let's just select all the mesh nodes associated with this gun. And I'll right click in my node editor to graph the materials on that selection. So what you'll see here is I have a shader and a shading group with a simple connection between them. So what I'm viewing now is just the base connection. So if I now use the one, two, three and four hotkeys, I can change the, the level of detail uh, for the display of these nodes. So one being the simplest view, two being the existing connections, so in other words, anything that's already been connected, three being the list of the most commonly connected attributes or connectable attributes, and then four being the fully expanded kind of master list. And this contains uh, attributes that you wouldn't necessarily normally work with, but that you might need to get to occasionally. So let's go back into the simplified view and let's bring in some other nodes for connections. So I'm going to bring in a diffuse texture. Now another thing that we've done for textures and shaders is we've added a simple hotkey for toggling the texture size or the swatch size rather. So I can just hit V and toggle the swatch size just so I can get a visual representation of what that texture actually looks like. So I don't need that right now. Actually, let's just go in and we'll grab the two nodes and we'll hit the three key to expand the commonly connectable attributes. So here I can basically start to make and break connections. So I'll take the out color of the diffuse texture and I'll feed that into the color, just dragging and dropping the color onto the, the input color for the material. Now what you'll notice is it made the connection. If I were to go back in and redo this, what you can see is if I expand this time to show the RGB values, if I take for instance the R value and I feed that into color, you'll notice it grays out, so it gives me a visual cue that it cannot be attached directly to color. However, if I hover over that, it will expand that vector and show me the underlying contents of the vector. So that allows me to connect R to R or G to G, to G or whatever it may be. Um, let's just con disconnect that, and for now we'll just go in and reconnect the color. Now let's just simplify the connection for this one. We'll go back into one mode and minimize the connections, and then we'll bring in the specular. Now the specular is going to be a little bit trickier to connect. I'll actually expand the attributes and you can see the out color is easy to access, but the specular is actually way down there on the list. So what we've added is a simple filter so that I can actually just type in the first few letters of the given attribute that I want to connect. And then I can basically filter the list based on that, drag and drop my connection and make the appropriate connection without having to, to fish through that long list of attributes. So let's go in here and we'll actually just uh, simplify the view of that one. And we'll bring in a fourth node, or rather a third node, for the normal map. So now in the case of a normal map, the normal map actually connects to the normal camera of the shader. So if I actually expand this, actually let's get rid of my filter, expand that, and I'll expand this. I actually want to take the out alpha this time and feed it into the normal camera. So I can actually connect that directly, but I won't get the appropriate result because with a bump map, you actually need an intermediate utility node. So here I can actually just use the tab key and I can actually type in BUMP. I get a list of all the bump nodes that I could create or any bump associated node. And then I can automatically create that and then manually make my connections to this node. Now this is not exactly practical. So in 
in this particular case, what I could also do to have that get auto-generated, I could just double click on my shader node to expand the attribute list in the attribute editor. And then I can still use my middle mouse drag just to simply drag that normal map onto the bump channel. That will automatically generate the bump 2D node for me. So now that I've got my node network set up, you can see here that I am getting the appropriate visual feedback in the viewport using viewport 2.0. But let's expand into the node view and let's just start to kind of clean up my view. Now one thing I can do is I can take all this and I can re-graph it just by clicking this button here and that will actually lay out the graph. Now the auto layout is sometimes good, but sometimes it needs to be refined a little bit. Actually, I'm going to uh, turn off my filter there. So let's actually switch this back into uh, just the mode that will show me what's actually connected for the shader and then I'm also going to hit the V key to actually expand the shading network on that or rather the the swatch on that and then for the textures I'll just kind of rearrange these kind of in a manual sense but I'm going to use grid snapping which is also new so I can actually take this texture and actually let's take all three of these textures and just hit the V key just to expand them simultaneously you can also by the way increase or decrease the actual size there so I'm going to rearrange that a little bit but here I'll just take the V key or oh, sorry, not the V key, but uh, actually I just meant to do the V key on these two. Here I'll just take the X key, and the X key will allow me to snap to the grid. So I can just click, drag, and snap, and let me just change the size of this texture here, and change the size of this texture here. Again, just hold X, click, drag, and snap, take this one, click, drag, and snap, and this would allow me to do a really nice visual alignment of my textures. So I could basically have these aligned in different ways based on kind of the needs of this particular uh, layout. So let's just say this is exactly what I need and I want to basically come back to this. Just like the hypergraph, I can actually create a bookmark of this. So I can just go into my bookmarks, create a bookmark, and we'll just call this my gun shader. I'll say OK. That'll generate a bookmark. Now I can actually go in and I can rearrange this. I can actually go in and remove some of these nodes from the graph just by using that little icon there. And let's say I go in and change some swatch sizes and I come in here and maybe expand these a little bit. And I really mess up the orientation and layout of my graph. All I have to do is just go back to the bookmarks, click on gun shader. That'll relay everything out and it also keeps track of all the various display parameters. So it remembers how many attributes were visible, what size the swatch was, how they were laid out along the grid, and so on. So that's a general overview of the improvements to the node editor in Maya 2014.